Hey! Hi, this is Dr. Christine. And Dr. Colin. And we are your co-hosts for the exciting new podcast called Love, Love Scrubs, Scrubs and, and Stories, Stories, where we dive deep into the world of dating and relationships and go beyond the people wearing the white coats, the scrubs, and the stethoscopes. Come join us on this journey where we engage in dialogue and share stories of love, heartbreak, resilience, and triumphs. And we also navigate our professional lives with our hearts on our sleeves. Please remember to subscribe and hit the notification button to stay up to date on all future episodes. And And we we look look forward forward to seeing you inside. inside. Hello. (laughs) Hello. Hi, Hi, everyone. everyone. Hi, everyone. Happy New Year to to all you guys for 2024. It's been a minute. Yeah, we're really, really excited to start off this new year with uh, this episode. Happy New Year to you, Christine. How is your uh, new year and starting you too. off? And, and what what is your intentions? What are your what are your love intentions for this year? What are my love intentions? I love it. Yeah, it's it's been great. I'm I'm actually really excited. You know, for this new year, for like new beginnings. You know. Uh, restart, reset on whatever it may be. And certainly like, you know, goals and intentions are at the top of of everyone's list, I would imagine. And certainly it is mine as well. And so like certainly for me this year, like I really want to focus on relationships. Like I think Mm -hmm. that definitely, and, and I mean, you know, all types of relationships, but specifically for, for me, like romantic relationship, because that definitely took a backseat in 2023. And so <laughs> I, <laughs> I definitely want to make it to be a like a founder of like your own community and app that just so happens to center around dating in the realm of healthcare professionals, would you? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, didn't. I know. It's just like, because people are like, Christine, like, you're like, so focused on like, trying to uh, connect everyone and um, helping the people to like, meet and um, connect to other people and, you know, various types of relationships and, you know, and bring happiness in our lives. And they're like, what about you? And I was, I, I just got so caught up, you know? And so I'm feeling like quite a hypocrite, you know, is really what it is. And so, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, aside from that, of course, it's something that I do really want, you know, and, and, and I recognize that, you know, I do have to put in effort right? <laughs> and um, be intentional about um, how I spend my time and who I want to spend it with and what I want out of this year. And, and like we were, you know, talking a little bit beforehand, like it's so easy for like time to just fly on by, you know, and just like the way 2023 did and already like we're now like mm. a week into this year already. And it's so yeah. easy for time to escape us so that unless we're intentional about uh, how we spend our time and what we want out of this year, then, you know, it's time to, to, focus on it and make it happen. What about you, Colin? How's it been for you? And what are your goals and intentions? And yeah. specifically in the in the romantic department? <laughs> Please share. Yeah. Well, before, before I share that, guys, if this is your first time listening, this is for single and uh, committed folks. We're talking about dating and relationships through the lens of the healthcare world. So if this is your first time, hit that subscribe button. My answer to that is, you know, in terms of the love department is definitely meeting my person, you know, sometime this year, right? And uh, so many different things that goes into this, right? From my lens, it's really about making sure that you are in tip top shape, physically, mentally, emotionally. I'm a big advocate of the law of attraction. So pretty much like, you know, would you date yourself? Right. And, you know, would you want yeah. to, you know, attract the partner that has, you know, similar, you know, qualities and values and belief systems that you would also want as well. And uh, I'm a big, uh, you know, I, there's someone much wiser than me said this quote, and I'm a you know huge uh, believer in this as well is, you know, wherever your energy flows, your, you know, wherever your focus goes, energy flows. So it goes back to what you're saying is like, you know, do you have that intention? Do you have that goal? Do you have that vision that you want to target for yourself? And if you don't, it's just really going to fall by the wayside, right? So in terms of love, yeah, definitely, you know, open to that, you know, whether it's doors, you know, different avenues, but ultimately I would love to kind of meet someone, you know, organically, right? We always kind of envision like, oh, you know, we just kind of met in a grocery store picking out oranges, You're bumping right? into each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We just like, you know, bumping each other, our heads hit against our foreheads, you know, kind of like every, you know, rom-com scene, you know? Um, How about your hands yeah, touch? Because you're grabbing for the same, you know, tangerine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Or coffee cup, right? But, you know, I mean, like, 
you know, that is the romantic side of it. But of course, it's like, it's really what, uh, you know, what you are open to. And I also believe in timing things. So, so yeah, it's, um, as doctors, it's, and healthcare professionals, we can be very, you know, very cerebral, right? And really being in our heads a lot. And I think a lot of times it's the combination of being heart center. We actually had an episode of this, right? We had a neurologist on, you know, how much of it is in our head and how much of it is in our heart, right? And, and you know, when we say our heart, I mm-hmm. think what we also mean is that gut, right? That gut intuition, right? So very, very interesting. And uh, the love department is always something that's part of the human condition. And it's always something that we all want ultimately to attract more love in our lives. Very well said, Colin, as always. And so certainly, you know, I'm sure, you know, like most, you know, of our single healthcare audience out there, I think it's definitely high on a lot of people's list because, you know, certainly we just came out of the holidays and being surrounded by family. And so, you know, naturally, I don't know if it was, you know, your family was like this, but there was a lot of questions as like, so what's going on in your life? Like who's in your life and who are you dating? And, you know, so on and on and on and whether or not (laughs) if we want to call it harassment or not, but certainly I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's harassment. Okay. So it's as been an Asian person, it's definitely that. harassment. So, <laughs> so, um, so interestingly enough there, you know, there was this, um, there's this phenomenon that was you know, coined dating Sunday that just happened. And it's, uh, the, the busiest online dating day of the year, you know, which, you know, is, makes a lot of sense, right? We're coming out of the holidays and relationships are on uh, a lot of people's minds. It's like, as like the top, you know one of the top priorities on their list, and so um, naturally people are like turning their focus and say, you know what, this is really important, and this is something that I want to you know focus my energy on. But you know it's challenging, right? Because you know we've you know we talked about how tough the the modern dating scene is and how much has evolved over time, and a lot of you know a lot of people are frustrated that you know it's like to want to get to you know to that place of being with our person, but yet we feel like there's just a lot of barriers. And, you know, if you look at some of the s- statistics and you hear about it and some of it is just quite sobering. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Very sobering for sure. You know, being a participant of online dating for years, it's definitely sobering, uh, more complex, more complicated. And with the advent of AI, I know you're a fan of AI. I think of it as, <laughs> you know, it adds a, yet another layer of complexity because now i've heard that ai can record and mimic like your voice we definitely know that it can create pictures right so at the end of the day you don't have no idea who's on the other end right so you know being catfish is like one end so you have another layer of being like robot fished i guess <laughs> so yeah it's um yeah it's just it's it's the game. It's the game. What is it called? Minesweeper. It's like it's like that game. You know, you kind of have to like tiptoe your way around through online dating. Yeah, it's so complicated. So there's just you know a lot of, um, but it's good to be knowledgeable about what the the, you know, the current landscape is like. What are the statistics? What are the current trends? And as it turns out, we have a guest today who is you know quite familiar and she's uh, quite interested and she knows uh, you know quite a bit about some of the statistics and it's something that she's been, you know, interested in, in talking about. And uh, she's a dear friend of mine. And we had like met up, I remember for the first time, she was uh, telling me about some of the statistics. And I was like, how do you know so much about this? This is like quite fascinating. So I was like, I, I would, we would love to invite you onto the show and, and share with us like some of your knowledge of your interests and um, how this has worked out for you. And, um, and so I'm really thankful that she agreed. Uh, her her name is Dr. Marjan Vitanchi. Um, would love to introduce her. So Dr. Um, Marjan is a double board certified dermatologist and Mohs micrographic surgeon. She is also dual fellowship trained in pediatric dermatology and clinical trials and research. She is a fitness enthusiast who works out seven days a week. Her workouts include hot yoga, strength training, cycling, and boxing. She is the founder of Athlete Think Tank, Southern California's first athlete social group, which I've been really grateful to be a, a part of. She has additional interests in anti-aging 
and Longevity and currently serves as the dermatologist for Project Blueprint, a unique longevity project that slows down aging led by entrepreneur Brian Johnson. Dr. Morjan is a fan of statistics and happens to know a lot of statistics around love, marriage, and relationships, as I mentioned. So please welcome Dr. Morjan Batanchi to the Love, Scrubs, and Stories podcast. Hi. Hi, Hi Morjan. How are you doing listening. today? I'm great. So glad to Thank have you so much for having us. me. Thank you. I'm happy to be so here. Much for making the very, time. Yeah. <laughs> very interesting podcast. I love the theme. Oh, thank you so much. How's the, the new year going for you? Great. I'm excited for 2024. I'm trying to, I didn't set a New Year's resolution. I don't like the um, all or none that you're going to switch your whole lifestyle on January 1st a huge believer mm -hmm. in making lifestyle changes over time. So I try to have just an outlook of what I want my 2024 to be, which uh, as you guessed, is more workouts, <laughs> more workouts, <laughs> you know, working on um, connection, community. Um, I do like that. Would love to touch on that. And I do have some more um, things that I want to get into. For instance, I'd love to start playing pickleball. And I've heard that is actually mm. a really the easy craze. sport I, to I, make I friends. I played the other yes. day. Oh, did you? Did you? Yeah. I you did. guys can play together. You have to come with me. Yeah, you have to join. Yes, me. absolutely. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dan Butner, he's the gentleman that talks about the blue zones and longevity. He said that, you know, the easiest way to meet people is actually going to a pickleball court because they're so friendly and you'll make friends in a heartbeat. So I'm excited mm -hmm. to try that out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think uh, so, he's also the um, one that mm -hmm. says that uh, tennis players are the ones that are the longest living in terms of uh, sports. Correct. So the sports, yes, the sports that have the highest like fatality or um, risk of dying young are the ones that are impact sports like football, you know, boxing, those type of sports. And the sports that increase longevity are any sports with a racket, like tennis. And then if you hide to the Asians and our racket sports, <laughs> exactly, right? he got it. Colin got it. And I believe he said the one that was currently ranked the highest actually pickleball, but maybe there's no differentiation between tennis and pickleball, but that's what he said. Yeah. That's very exciting. <laughs> for me, I probably just stick yeah, with ping yeah, pong then. For sure. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> I, I think as long as it has some movement and that it's a sport that involves some community, you play with somebody else and it's easy to do and you're not going to get injured. Yeah. I love it. But yeah. So we're all physicians. We're all about health mm -hmm. um, in all forms, including relationship health. When you and I had like met up, I remember for the first time we started talking and you were sharing with me all this information about like statistics and everything. And I was like, this is like so fascinating. And how do you know so much? And so that's why we thought we'd bring you on, uh, especially given, you know, the current landscape, how, how much the dating scene has evolved like so significantly. And, you know, as Colin and I were talking about it and everyone's quite aware and many are really frustrated frustrated with what's going on right you know there and so I guess to start off like what inspired your interest in like learning about mm -hmm. all these different stats and trends and and how important do you think it is for individuals to be like well informed and 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 perhaps use this knowledge um, to their advantage like perhaps you have to your advantage right I personally just love numbers and statistics I loved math and I was in the sciences and then I on my own had a significant personal interest in like science statistics and human nature and community. So that probably is more personalized, but I find these statistics fascinating. I know I'm not the only one, just the fact that, you know, Colin also know that racquetball or tennis ball statistic. I think a lot of people, and I would say the majority of people, when it comes to knowing about themselves and about numbers and statistics, one of the top areas that people want to learn more about is their is medicine and their body. So I think that in general, people have a lot of interest. Now, when it comes to dating, I don't think anyone needs to know a specific number. I think it's just helpful to know the trends. I will tell you, not every number and trend is fun. A lot of people think I have a lot of fun statistics and some of them are fun and silly. For instance, you know, one of the uh, largest groups to have the most swipes or to get likes on um, dating apps are, you know, women of Middle Eastern descent. 
you can uh, dissect why that is. But, you know, there's fun statistics and there's not so fun statistics like divorce statistics and what increases the rate of divorce and sort of some truths that mm, you may not want to hear, but they're good to know and be aware of. You know, there's some statistics that it's tough to say that's not going to happen to me. For instance, if you have, if you marry someone that's more than 20 years, your senior, your divorce rate is above 90%. And it's usually closer to 99 for that. So to say that, oh, I'm the 1%, I'm the 1%, that's pretty tough. You have to really believe in your love. So I think they're helpful to know, but you should take them with a grain of salt because love can conquer a lot. And yeah, does it my, matter uh, if, uh, like on that statistic, uh, gender wise? I'm curious whether the, the you no, said if no. You so there was a someone... statistic, right? There was this a research done on divorce rates, and they sort of looked at a lot of different age ranges and found that the lowest rate of divorce, and they only looked at ages irrelevant of gender, that they did not take into account anything else like children or things like that, but um, that people had the lowest rate of divorce if they were the same age. And everybody thinks that the man has to be older. That's not true. It's the same age because you have so much in common. You remember the same things in history. You watch the same TV shows. You probably listen to the same music on the radio. The more commonalities we have with each other, the more likely we are to enjoy spending time together and talk about things. Doesn't mean you have to have everything in common. We all know that men and women have, you know, separate hobbies and, you know, they like to, you know, you may be someone that's more outgoing, less outgoing. You don't have to match on every level, but just have those few things in common. The moment yeah. that you hit a four-year gap, whether plus or minus, there's a rise in divorce statistics. Then when you hit a 10-year gap, it jumps. It's like 80 to 90%. And then when you, you hit a 20-plus year gap, you're close to 99% divorce rate. So I think these are just interesting, interesting to know. You know, and I know we're, we're, we, we're not, I know we're just sort of jumping to marriage and divorce, but um, there's also some that you may want to ignore. For instance, uh, with each marriage, rate of divorce goes higher. But does that mean that just because you were married twice, now you found the love of your life, you're not going to get married again? You can definitely get married, you know, especially if it feels different, especially if you go out in a different way or you make some smarter decisions, you've identified red flags. So you have to take these statistics with a grain of salt, but I think they're excellent to know. And I don't think that anyone should be naive and think these things can't happen to them or they're not part of the statistic. Yeah. Yeah. My comment to that is, you know, I just had a conversation with someone earlier and, you know, I just kind of, we were talking about topic and I just made this comment of like, oh, you know, what would MacGyver do? Right. Because they were trying to fumble with their phone. <laughs> they're trying they were trying to like, you know, prop it up. And I was like, <laughs> okay, let's MacGyver this. Right. And obviously it's like you're dating yourself. It's like if you have no idea who MacGyver is, you have no idea the reference. Right. <laughs> so I can understand how, like, you know, certain references, especially movies and pop culture, you know, it gives you it gives you a sense of like a community, but a community in terms of like the error, right? The the error, the time, the generation. And that increases bond, right? If you are part of that, right? And I can see how if you go beyond the four years, it could you can theoretically become more and more, you know, distant. But I think it's like, you know, women finding older men attractive because, you know, my perception of that is of that maturity. There's a balance. There's more of a balance of maturity that females are seeking, you know, in, in a male that's older, right? So it's interesting. And I agree with you. It's like taking with a grain of salt and think of it as more of trends as opposed to like hard facts that you have to fo follow. So but definitely fascinating to know like, any other um, statistics and trends that you can think of Marjan that you'd like to share? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, we can get into them. They're not all very happy, though. <laughs> but um, yeah, I like the uh, I just like what Colin was saying, and by the way, I love the MacGyver reference. I use that <laughs> reference all the time, actually. <laughs> if I take like pasta and a dressing and like make something good out of it with spices, I'm like, oh, I MacGyver that well. Okay. Because I'm not a great cook. <laughs> the work in progress. <laughs> to be honest, uh, one of my fa some of my favorite statistics are around divorce. Yes. Yeah, so I have lawyer friends in Orange County. That's where I live, Orange County, California. And and they tell me that the rate of divorce in Orange County is 70%. And 
and that it can be so For shocking real? to people. So my 70? first question, rather than being, mm-hmm, it's 70%. But I wasn't immediately shocked. I threw back a question and I said, is it 70% in Orange County or is it 70% in metropolitan areas? Like, is that what it's going to be in New York City, Miami City? And she didn't know. She just knew Orange County. So I, it is high. I'm not sure that that's because of some bottleneck or, you know, some variances that we have here, or that's just what the norm is. Because we've all heard since we were a young age that the rate of divorce is like 50% or slightly more Mm -hmm. than 50%, slightly. Like that's been around. So 70% is not that off. Um, I just think it's very interesting to me that people go into marriage. And I know, I know love can really do something to our brain. Uh, really make us mm-hmm. overlook a lot of things. But it's interesting to me that so many people can get married and there's no prenup in place. There's no previous discussion of how many kids you're going to have. And there's no, nobody wants to talk about these things. Like I have not heard of a couple, unless they are a lawyer or one of them is a lawyer of sitting before the marriage and saying, okay, what would happen if we divorce? Like, what are the chances? What do you think about that? Have you ever thought about it? Do you have people like, we don't have this conversation. We're like, oh, that could never happen to us. Actually, statistically, it will probably happen to you if you live in Orange County, right? So why are we not? And here we are. (laughs) More of these, right, we're all, okay. So yeah, we're we're all in Orange County. We're all filming in Orange County, okay? So statistically, we are all gonna get a divorce if we get married. What can we do to lower that? We can have discussions, you know, the number one reason if you probe a divorce layer about why people should sign prenups, it's not because everything is written out in the prenup. It's because at least the couple is talking about finances and divorce before getting married. If all else fails, that is why divorce lawyers recommend that conversation. So, so the trends that high is because they don't have that conversation before the marriage. Nobody has to know each other. It's uncomfortable. The, no, but yeah, people don't want to talk about it. In fact, if you ever bring it up to someone, which you shouldn't, you should only worry about your own life. They will get offended. Like we're never going to divorce. Okay. No, it's like, I'm not speaking to you or about you. I'm just stating these are the statistics and people just think that, you know, their love is ironclad. Yeah. We had a, we had a beautiful podcast episode with another guest talking solely about prenups. And the biggest takeaway that I got from it, Christine, you know, love to uh, hear your takeaway was that if you think about prenups in terms of like an insurance policy, so like you wouldn't buy a car or drive a car off the lot without car insurance, right? And you Absolutely. would also have home insurance, right? So these things are like, duh, right? But, you know, he was framing it because he did a lot of research into prenups and uh, he also had a previous marriage as well. And, you know, uh, he said that if you think about prenups as like marriage insurance, then it frames everything, like having everything in place, you know, before you enter into something, kind of like how you would have a contract with a consultant, for example, right? You would have some sort of business agreement, right? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Right. I guess the takeaway of this brief conversation is that you you can't rely on your feelings. Our feelings are temporary. And life can, you know, life can change so much. It can change us. It can change our circumstances. And it I don't want to tell people that they need to get prenups. That is I th- I'm not here. I'm not the lawyer. I'm not recommending that. I'm recommending a discussion. I, there's nothing you should be uncomfortable talking about before marriage. You should be able to talk about finances or debt. You know, where are we going? What are your goals? Those are the things that we should be talking about. Um, I have a friend, they, a couple that recently got married. And I, I don't know if they have a prenup. I, my assumption is going to be that they didn't, but they had conversations. They went to uh, couples therapy. They went to couples therapy mm-hmm. through their church. And you know that a lot of churches have programs where they actually go one by one. Okay. Children. Okay. Money. And they, you know, they had a conversation. They felt that they were both in the right headspace as far as what they needed. And I yeah. don't know if they have a contract or not. I'm going to assume they didn't, but that discussion, I already know just made them stronger. If mm-hmm. you want to know about statistics, statistically, the, if you meet someone and are married in under two years of meeting them, you have a higher rate of divorce 
and this one I don't remember the exact number, than if you were with them for at least two years before marriage. Because again, oh. if you know someone mm -hmm. longer than you understand, as opposed to a quick marriage, and then you're learning things within the marriage. And a lot of people, this isn't a statistic, but it's more of what older uh, couples have told me, that if you want to date someone, go through all the seasons. Most will say go mm. through the seasons twice, go through the holidays right. twice, go, but at least do it once. Oh, I see. So at least right. like yeah. a year, like be with mm -hmm. them for at least a year. At least a year. Per yes, preferably two before you're getting married. Mm. Sounds like children. very yeah. sound advice. I am. Sure. I um I love the fact that um the conversations is very important, especially I, I think about it in terms of goal setting, right? I think having a mature adult discussion as a couple, having goal setting is very, very important, right? I think those are conversations that need to be had. And I'm a big advocate for even just couples therapy, not necessarily if there's something wrong, but to prevent as a more of a preventative measure. I think people don't think of couples therapy. There's that immediate connotation of, oh, there's something to fix, right? In order to exactly. do couples therapy. Mm -hmm. I think having it beforehand is a great way of um, use, utilizing it. Yeah, absolutely. So I watched this, I follow this YouTuber, he's uh, big on productivity, and he talks about productivity and its application to relationships. And he said, like, one of his best spent dollars was actually to see a relationship therapist, you know, he's in a committed relationship. And he's like, there's nothing, you know, wrong per se with his relationship. But they intentionally like decided to do that based on someone's recommendation. And it was like, it was the best uh, money that he had spent, because it actually took his relationship to an even higher level, you know, and like what you were saying, Marjan, about again and Colin about just it's really important about having these discussions and conversations and and opening up the door to like just learning about you know each other more. Yeah. And so I really like that, and and I really like that, you know, just just the you know obviously the awareness of like these statistics and and trends and all those. Some of them are quite sobering, but it's good to be aware of them so that we can use that information and like kind of figure out like how do we go about and just you know navigating this this landscape on how to you know to use this to our advantage and to you know and to best you know apply you know some of the the teachings out there especially uh, among our elders you know who've you know right. been through all that with all the seasons that can really teach us so Marjan were there any specific like statistics and trends that that was, you know, specifically for like our audience of healthcare professionals that you came across or heard about? Uh, <laughs> well, the only thing I can tell you is um, divorce rates are not any better if you're marrying a doctor and you're a doctor. Sorry to tell you. We, it's actually uh, quite difficult to be married to a doctor. I don't think people understand the, um, especially if you're not a doctor, I don't think people understand the hours and the commitment that goes into it. Uh, they get into a relationship, then the, you know, the wife or the husband is dealing with, you know, their spouse not being in there in the long hours. So um, rate of divorce is high. Good news is that, you know, with the advent of internet dating, there's more avenues to, for people to meet. And actually, um, Forbes just came out with some dating statistics. And the they found that one of the highest age groups to match is actually 43 to 58 that mm. that age group is finding that when they're matching, they're more likely to be in relationships about 72% of the time. It ends if someone chooses to go on a date with someone from a dating app, it will end up to be in a relationship, which is great. Whereas for most people, it's a little bit lower. Although if people are in the apps long enough, um, they have found that almost 70%, like it's 68 to 70% of the time people do end in some relationship, a form of a relationship. Close to 30% though, have never had a relationship from an app. And mm -hmm. when we were talking about the statistics, there are a lot of people who create profiles and they're just not active. So, mm -hmm. you know, 10 years ago when less people were into internet dating, they found that 90% of people who created profile had never been on a date. We don't mm. have newer statistics than that. But I, what, there is a bottleneck in internet dating, where people who are perceived as attractive are swiped on a lot more. And they're the, the pool of men at the top 
And the top 30% are pretty much getting all of the dates, unfortunately. The top 10% are getting swiped on by most women, over 90% of women, but the top 30% get a certain amount of swipes. And unless, and the ones that are not rated, you know, as attractive as the top 30 aren't getting any. So the problem with internet dating is the fact that we're judging people way too quickly. We're judging people you have just limited profile information. Pictures. So much, mm -hmm. so much limited information. Mm -hmm. So much. Mm -hmm. And that really goes into some advice that people have been releasing. Uh, for instance, Hinge has a um, sort of a matchmaker and a dating expert that reviews their statistics. And one of her biggest pieces of advice is go on more than one date. Not every match you have is going to go well on the first date, even if they're the one, even if you really like them. So mm -hmm. you can match with someone and be like, oh, the date wasn't great. Or, oh, I didn't feel a connection. Just unless they warm. were rude. Yeah, unless they, right. But you don't know how nervous someone is on a first date. You don't know how long it's been still on a first date. You, they could be gauging you. They could maybe mm. not have been talkative because they were trying to give you time to talk. I have definitely been on a first date where I thought I wouldn't go out with this person again. And then I met the other person through friends and things like that. I went out with them again and it was day and night. So mm. the number one thing I would say is at least if you had some interest or some attraction, it just didn't feel right, go on a second date. Now, of course, if they were rude, they were red flags, that's different. Then you have to move on because we also don't want people ignoring red flags. So, hey, guys, what's going on? I hope that you guys are enjoying this episode. We felt that this episode is so important, so much fun, so engaging that we decided to split it up into two parts. So be sure to check back to part two of this episode. Yeah, and it's going to be really worth your while. So we encourage you to hop on over and, and check out the, the second half of this episode. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching and listening to this channel. If you enjoyed this, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you felt like this was a benefit for someone else, please let them know as well. As a reminder, this channel does not offer medical advice. All opinions expressed are ours and our guests only. It is for general informational purposes only and does not replace professional healthcare services. Please consult your own healthcare provider for any medical issues you may have. Until the next episode, whether you're in and out of your scrubs, Please remember to love yourself and others and lead with kindness. Bye. Bye.